Sony has just announced a new telephoto lens for their E-mount system, the 70-200mm f4 optical steady shot Mark II lens. This lens has incredible potential for video shooters replacing the Mark I that I have here which came out in 2014. This lens predates the Sony a7 II. So let's talk about this new lens, the improvements, the one partially controversial change, and all the things you stand to gain by picking one up. Right out of the gate, the new Sony 70-200mm f4 Mark II looks much better than the Mark I. And the first category of improvement is going to be the autofocus. And what can we expect? Sony, known for their high performance autofocus, say this is going to be the highest performing 70-200mm f4 in autofocus that they've ever made. Sony states that the new lens will perform up to 20% faster and more accurately than the original version, which actually, I really like the original version. I think it performs pretty well, so this stands to be even better. It's honestly insane how good Sony autofocus has gotten on these newer camera bodies and lenses. Let's talk about perhaps the biggest change and the one you're most likely to notice if you pick this telephoto lens up, and that is how much lighter it is. Sony has managed to pull a few different pieces of glass out of the lens, making it overall 46 grams lighter than the original, which if I think back to when I picked this lens up, I picked it up because it was much lighter than the original 70 to 200 millimeter F 2.8 G Master lens, and this replacement is even lighter. The new lens is also 26 millimeters shorter than the original Mark I lens. How did they do that? Well, this is the part that gets a little polarizing, at least for me as a video shooter. Sony managed to make their lens smaller and lighter because they changed the way the zoom mechanism functions. The original Mark I had an internal zoom, which means that when you zoom it, it doesn't actually change physical size, and the center of gravity doesn't really change either. It's a very static lens, which is great for video shooting. But the new lens, and a recent trend amongst high-performance telephotos, is the introduction of a tromboning or extending style zoom mechanism. So this lens when you zoom it will actually physically get longer and the center of gravity is subject to change because you have materials moving out past where the lens was when it was at minimum focus. This new construction is going to be great for keeping weight and size down. Let's be honest, it's going to be the ultimate compact telephoto zoom. But there are trade-offs you have to make if you're a video shooter. Well, for one, the lens itself is going to be harder to put a matte box on because the end of the lens is going to be extending and then coming back and either you mount the matte box right to the end like a clip-on or you just don't zoom it if it's on rails. It's going to be difficult to use it with a matte box. Uh, another perhaps con would be balancing the lens. If the center of gravity is changing, I don't know if you're gonna put this on a stabilizer, it's a, bit, it's a bit telephoto to put on a stabilizer, but on a gimbal or a steady rig of some kind, you're going to have shifting center of gravity when you zoom the lens. So that is also a consideration you're gonna have with this Mark II that you didn't have with the Mark I. I personally would have liked to see an internal zoom mechanism. That's just my preference as a video shooter, but you cannot deny that this is going to be one compact telephoto zoom lens. And the weight savings in the bag is going to be very helpful for those shooters who work long days. Increasing the lens's versatility is the new dramatically shortened close focus distance. The original lens's close focus distance, the minimum distance away that you could focus this lens on an object was one meter. And this new lens, 0.26 meters. This is dramatic change. In fact, the 70 to 200 millimeter F4 OSS Mark II has macro capabilities. It has a macro switch. Now, you're not going to get one-to-one -one macro reproduction, but Sony does advertise one-to-two macro reproduction, which is absolutely unprecedented and something I've never seen in a telephoto zoom of this type. It's a great addition because it means you're going to be able to fill your frame with even tighter shots of your subject and macro shots with a long telephoto zoom is incredible luxury. I couldn't have even imagined this on previous Sony lenses. And now we're getting to my favorite part, perhaps the best new feature to come out of the new Sony 70 to 200 millimeter F4 lens, and that is that you can now use teleconverters with these lenses. You can now use Sony teleconverters with the F4 version of this lens, and that is big news. It allows you to extend the reach of your 70 to 200, turning it into at max a 140 to 400 millimeter lens. That's incredible versatility. I remember my biggest pet peeve when I bought the original 70 to 200 millimeter F4 was that I couldn't use Sony teleconverters that were, in essence, purpose built for the G Master 2.8 lens. And I thought that was a big miss from Sony because you know I should be able to use teleconverters on a, on a zoom lens. That's what they're for. And the fact that you can now put a two times teleconverter on this new lens, making it effectively a 140 to 400 millimeter zoom lens will drastically enhance the versatility of this lens. Like this is gonna be a knockout pairing. I really admire Sony's effort to get that lens compatible with the teleconverters. I think that's gonna make a lot of people pull the trigger on this new lens. 
One of the incremental upgrades on this lens, if you look on the side of the barrel, you'll see a plethora of switches. And one of those switches is for the new steady shot mode to stabilize your shaky shots. This new steady shot mode uses a camera shake algorithm to smooth out your footage and keep your images and video nice and sharp. Now, one thing about this new lens that I don't like, but I can understand is the increase in price. The original lens back in 2014 came out to about $1,500. Now you can get them on sale for as low as $1,200 if you're still interested in the Mark I. But this new Mark II will be coming in at $1,700, a $200 increase from the previous Mark I. But for all these new features and added technology capabilities, it's practically a no-brainer. I don't see the price increase hurting the value of this lens. If you want a 70 to 200 millimeter from Sony, this is your choice and it's a good value at that. I'm seeing a lot of benefits to purchasing this lens if you're upgrading from the Mark I or if you're coming in from a different brand. And in my personal opinion, this lens is giving owners stuff that I never even thought to ask for. Honestly, the macro capabilities are a pretty interesting feature. So like I said, this lens looks like it's going to be very much worth the price and it looks like it'll be releasing around September, 2023. In conclusion, I love this release to the Sony E-mount system, innovating and replacing on an original crowd favorite from Sony and making it even better. And it's not just any new lens to the system either. This is Sony's 50th lens in the E-mount system. Can you believe we're already at 50 lenses? Jeez. Not only does this lens, and I'm gonna say the full name here, 70 to 200 millimeter F4 Macro G OSS Mark II contain superb high speed and high performance autofocus. This is one of the world's first zoom lenses to offer half macro capability throughout the entire zoom range with a maximum magnification of 0.5 throughout. When you add the weight savings, the teleconverter compatibility and the macro modes, it essentially makes the new lens a no-brainer over the Mark I, and that's ignoring incremental upgrades in autofocus and stabilization. It is going to be tough to look at my Mark I lens now that I know this new one is out there. But that's it for me. For more information on this lens, the Mark I, and other projects that I'm up to, you can visit videosbyjosh.com. Thank you for watching. All right, this is kind of a B-sides after video portion where I just, I'm probably just talk about the Mark I a bit more. So I picked this lens up back in 2016 and have used it as part of my freelance video production kit for a number of years. I really like this lens. Uh, I've been debating on replacing it for as basically as long as I've owned it. I think that's the case if you have any F4 in the Sony line, you kind of debate about like, when am I moving over to the G Master kind of thing. But I was actually pretty disappointed with the original G Master 70 to 200 2.8 because it was very heavy. And uh, in a lot of my projects, it would just back focus into oblivion. Um, it was one of Sony's oldest lenses. So it did have its quirks. Super cool glass though. The image was super sharp. So when the new one came out, like the new Mark II F2.8, I was excited to, you know, save up and, and you know, I'm going to get that, the best of the best. I was also kind of disappointed that it had that trombone style zoom system as well. But then this announcement came out and I'm like, do I, do I really need it? I mean, I love my F4 and this is a much better F4. Like this, this looks like a, well, it's not like a, like a hallmark, like a flagship lens. It's not like, you know, groundbreaking. Well, it is with the macro actually. It's, it's just, it's an impressive lens. And I like to see people bragging about the F4s because you know everyone talks a big game about the F2.8s like everyone like you gotta have them but for professional work this F4 is also going to pull a lot of weight. I'm excited to see all of these features come to that mid-range even though the mid-range is getting more expensive. I'm excited to see them build it out better and I'd be excited if I got this lens. I'm going to be excited saving up for this lens. It's going to be a really good lens. So I'm excited to see it on the Sony system. Sony doing a great job innovating on their older lenses. I'm excited to see this lens and what comes next.